Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your September 2016 General Tarot Reading. Being given by a fellow Sag. <laughs> oh, that's a nice, how do you do? Boy, I just picked this card, even though I've shuffled, for in the same position for Capricorn. Very interesting. Hmm. That's nice. I like the Hermit card. Okay. I'm going to just um, pick this um, energy card right now, just because I'm curious how it relates to this. This is the uh, booklet that goes along with it. Sandra and Taylor, Energy Oracle Cards. This is what the back looks like. 13, Financial Constraints. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So, and it's funny because I was thinking in terms of finances because this is the recent past and we have this card of anxiety that's associated with the Nine of Swords, which is why I kind of uh, winced a little bit <laughs> that that's the overall energy in the month of September. Now, on the first of the month, uh, we're having a, a solar eclipse in Virgo. For Sagittarians, that hits the 10th house of career. Now, at the time of the solar eclipse, which would normally be this wonderful propulsion into a new level of, you know, of advancement in one's career, it's happening during a Mercury retrograde. So it is possible, and it's funny because... Um, the swords cards relate to the air signs and they deal with communication. So, you know, that might have some kind of connection too. where the nine of pen, uh, nine of swords is kind of like talking about this mercury retrograde and how it can cause a lot of headaches and problems, miscommunication. So in the 10th house of career, it would be pretty logical to expect that there may be a bit of a holdup for the first few weeks, even though that eclipse has gone through that house. Remember that eclipses, they are very powerful full moons, not only in the fact that they tend to, you know, bring in a lot of change, but also because they tend to... Um, be longer lasting you know a new moon phase sometimes people say set your intentions within a couple of days of the new moon and then you know i i never have gotten straight maybe it varies from person to person of what constitutes a new moon phase whether it's one new moon to the next or the new moon to the full moon i think it's to the new moon to the full moon which is only two weeks because you initiate something and then you complete something so in this uh, particular situation, we're talking about something that can last for three to six months. So even though we have this Mercury retrograde, don't think that it's going to be sticking around and causing havoc for much longer than that. So it could be that, you know, especially people who do not, you know, watch these forecasts might, you know, see what's happening and think, oh, no, this is going to be permanent. But no, it's not. And Remember, too, that minor arcana cards are snapshots in time. They're very uh, fluctuating temporary energies. But because it's a theme, it is a greater, of a greater influence of the whole month. And it's probably best for us to um, really meditate and try to 
detach ourselves from micromanaging our careers, not to, you know, be too obsessive about what happens, and, you know, cultivate that detachment so that it, you know, every little, if there's a setback, for instance, that it doesn't throw you for a loop, because then that creates its own wave of negative energy, too. Um, in the recent past, we have the King of Pentacles. So this can be somebody who, oh, and by the way, if you're talking about a love relationship, it could be um, a problematic, I would say, specifically, but any kind of an air sign person. So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And um, the other thing, too, I want to say this is very important. Um, we're having this full moon on the 16th of September, and this will be falling in our fourth house of home and family. And so this is really important, too, because there may be some uh, inheritance issues, and these things may come to an end. If there was some kind of um, fighting or anything that was causing uh, some kind of... Um, what do you call that? Not just drama, but stress or in harmony, bickering, that kind of thing. It might come to an end around the middle of September. And that is a lunar eclipse, so it's a very powerful finish in this area. And so just uh, just look at it like that, because maybe this, this is just the theme of the month, but... Maybe it, it will only be until that time, and then things will get resolved at the time of the full moon in the middle of the month. And then you will see that that anxiety that you had will vanish. It was consuming you and maybe keeping you up late at night. But then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, well, you know, and, and something positive may come from it. But in the recent past, it was the King of Pentacles. So this is dealing with someone from... Any kind of financial institution like a bank or um, um, a real estate mogul or, or company that, again, this would have been the cause of your anxiety. So if you had some kind of property matters related to a will or something like that, that's something that will, um, will be on your mind and may be causing you a bit of stress because it's very important. It's the king. It's something, the person is somebody in authority who is, could be an accountant, but it could be some official who is looking at the books and seeing that something is not right. Okay. And the, the near future, we have the death card. So again, this could be around the time of the full moon where the, where the situation is resolved. For individuals who are dating, and it may not be a property matter or an inheritance issue, it could be that you, ha you know, that you were with a um, an earth sign individual, and maybe that person has been causing you problems, and you will end the relationship, um, you know, at some point in the near future. Maybe the 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 swords card isn't an an air sign, maybe it's just saying that the earth sign individual, the Taurus, the Virgo, or the, um, what's the called, uh, Capricorn person was causing you stress and you decide to end the relationship. The higher, uh, perspective is the hermit card. So again, um, it is about not being too consumed by these events that may seem very important right now, but in the grand scheme of things, they're not. You know, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a legal matter, a financial matter, all of these things are not important. By the way, you may have been working um, at a company represented by the King of Pentacles. Maybe it's in, in banking or something like that. And you can't stand it. And you maybe, you know, the job ends. You don't have to quit. And then you get unemployment. 
the death card is not necessarily you quitting something, but something quitting you. And, uh, you know, actually in the case of a job situation, that might be the best. Because then, you know, you don't have to be the one to do it and you don't get, it, get penalized for it. So what crosses you is the Ten of Pentacles. This is what I was talking about, family money. And so it may be problematic. As I say, there may be some kind of situation happening, which is even a bit contentious. And it's causing you sleepless nights, causing you stress. It doesn't have to. If you meditate, if you go within and put it in a better, higher perspective, maybe you need to stop um, socializing so much right now. Maybe you just need to be by yourself. Maybe you've been talking about this problem with other people and it hasn't been helping. The consciousness to adopt is the High Priestess. So this is about using your intuition. Something may be deceptive surrounding this issue. You may have to really, I was going to say put on your thinking cap, but it's actually putting on your uh, intuiting cap and finding out what is happening. And it's not so much, you know, trying to become a psychic if you feel like you're not a psychic. Um, by tuning into your higher self, just sitting and being in, in stillness and silence, you may have some, some, someone speak to you and it's just a thought that you think you're thinking, but actually it's your spirit guide. Actually, it's your, um, one of your loved ones who's crossed over. Maybe it's the loved one of the person. If you are having an estate matter, maybe it's that person who is telling you what actions to take to get your fair share of an inheritance or property, whatever the property is, and not to just lie down and take it. Be because if people are deceiving you, you, you know, you really can't reward them by letting them do it, can you? I mean, I suppose it depends on the situation, but, you know, it, it is about something that, you know, is unknown. You know, there may be, you know, hidden behaviors going on. If you were in a company, maybe you were forced out of a company and you were given a, an official story. Maybe that's all bull. Maybe it never happened that way. Maybe in your personal relationship, maybe somebody told you something um, that they were leaving for one reason and you find out it's a totally different reason. The advice is the nine of wands. I think that this, the fair thing to say about this card is that just when you think, it, you know, things are fine, it could be that you have one more battle to fight. So even after the full moon on the 16th, if something does seem, seem like it gets resolved, just remember that card and keep vigilant. This is a card of vigilance because you still may get somebody who tries that one last time, even after something is decided in against their favor. They may, they may have a hard time giving up and trying to get what doesn't belong to them. So you're going to have to, you can never let your guard down with certain people. And if this is a personal relationship, the same thing. Someone may leave you and then try to get back with you after they left you. And if you, if you weaken, if you soften, maybe you're really pissed off when they leave. And you come to the realization that it's for the best. And then they come back or they try to come back. So you have to kind of keep your guard up and make sure that you don't get manipulated by somebody like that or else you may just end up repeating that cycle now the outcome is the 
king of cups. This can be somebody who is really um, coming to you with an offer of love. Um, when I think of kings, I think of people who are officials. And this could be if you're like dealing with legal matters that somebody really, I don't want to say takes pity on you, but believes you that they connect with you emotionally. Let's say that you have to testify about something, maybe, you know, related to a property matter, an inheritance issue. They will resonate with you emotionally and take your side and give you an offer um, that is really like um, restoring to you on an emotional level. Maybe you felt not just... Um, the typical feelings of anxiety, but maybe you have felt a sense of um, betrayal that has led you to retreat, you know. Um, this kind of restores your faith in humanity, I would think. And, I mean, that would be wonderful. It could be that your father is very helpful. Maybe your father is in spirit and helping you. The, um, the Ten of Pentacles can relate to, I think Tens are fathers, but I think, the, I think there's like a fatherly influence in this reading as well. And there's like this, maybe you're um, given this gift and it's from beyond the grave, you know, the spiritual realm of um, some kind of offering, some type of healing that can take place on a very large level and involve other people too, perhaps. Maybe, you, you know, if you had a rift in your family, maybe it gets resolved. So all in all, I think it's very nice. You know, it might be that there are some challenges, especially internally for us to, um, to kind of deal with, but I think we, we have what it takes and I think we're going to really enjoy ourselves. I, I really have a good feeling, actually, about September. I don't know about you guys, but I do. Now, let's get on to this um, card that talks about financial constraints, because I don't, I don't really like to hear that. But I, don't, I feel like a lot of Sagittarians have actually done much better in 2016. Um, you can leave in the description, in the comment section below, you know, if you, you have felt this, particularly if this has been a good year for you financially or if it's not um i know i when i read comments from people some people some sagittarians say it's been you know a lousy year for them so i guess it all depends on other planetary influences that you know affect you personally whether or not that would be true Maybe it's silly to compare us all together. Okay, restrictions concerning money. This card shows an old-fashioned safe with little money but lots of cobwebs and dust. Money be, may be tight at this time, so rein in your spending and be circumspect by the, about the financial requirements in your life. This is not a time of indulgence. So be aware of what's really important and consciously choose your expenditures. There is a big difference between what you need and what you want. This card is telling you to take care of your needs and bide your time. Things will get better, but for now be willing to live more conservatively and always value the money and the good things you already have. Well, you know, that's pretty straightforward, I suppose. I will say that Jupiter is currently in Virgo. And this has been in our 10th house of career. On the, I believe it's this, this is it the 9th or the 7th? It's, it's one of those, I think it's the 7th. Or is it the 9th? It might be the 9th. But, you know, one of those two days. It, it, Jupiter will have finished its year-long transit in the sign of Virgo and will be going into Libra. Libra forms um, a friendly angle with Sagittarius, a sextile. 
So we can look for a much easier um, interaction with our ruling planet. And I feel that because we're having a Mercury retrograde in the 10th house of career, that that's what this card is kind of um, going along with that, you know, don't be so, uh, don't, don't spend your money in the same way because you don't know if you'll have a temporary um, kind of lull in your career and your money will not, or your earnings won't be as good for a few weeks. And then all of a sudden you're in a hole. So just um, be very prudent. But I just want to tell all of you who are interested that I really, you know, am excited for, for Jupiter to go into Libra. Because I feel that just the nature of Libra anyhow is much more favorable for Jupiter because Jupiter is about expansion and Libra is a sign, you know, associated with Venus. Venus and Jupiter are very comfortable with each other. They're along the same lines. Venus can bring money too. Okay. Whereas Virgo, it's a, it's, it's a very kind of a practical energy. It tends to be much more economical and you, you know, <laughs> If you know any Libran people, they like to spend money like water, usually. So having Jupiter in Libra, I think, will really be more our cup of tea, so to speak. So anyway, Sag, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, please click on the description in, in that description um, box below for the link to my website. Otherwise, have a great September. Bye.